Okay. Um, as you probably know, if you have followed any of my talks before, that Colourful doesn't use ASCII. It's one of its most endearing features, and it's utter pain because it means you can't um, interface with anybody else very easily. The, the reason it uh, doesn't use ASCII is because it uses a pre-parsed 32-bit token value, of which the four bits are the colour and the other 28 bits are a uh, Huffman encoded uh, compression of, of, uh, of, of its name. Uh, okay, if, you're, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then um, it will all become clear, I think, with this. So I'm hoping a page down will move to the next slide. Oh, magic. Okay, so what I want to talk about, first of all, is cakes and biscuits. Um, I hope it will be clear why in a minute. Okay, so I've observed my wife as she makes cakes. That's her job. She's a trained uh, pâtissier. And I observed that depending on what you put into your cake mix or biscuit mix, it, you get either a cake or a biscuit. So um, for one, one unit of flour, you put in half a unit of fat, one egg, no raising agent, and you, you get a, a pancake. Um, for if you want to, if you put a half a unit of fat, uh, no eggs, and put in some bicarbonate of soda, you, you get a biscuit, a uh, cake, is, and so on. It's more fat, more eggs. Bread, uh, no fat, no eggs, yeast, etc. So they're all the same sort of thing. You can put them in as a, a, a class of foods that you can eat and a, a subclass of foods containing flour. And there is, of course, the famous incident of the Jaffa cake. I have no idea what the, uh, the proportion of fat and eggs and so on is, is um, but it's not certain whether it's defined as a cake or a biscuit. So anyway, the point <laughs> I'm making here is that you, you mix up uh, you choose what you put into your mixture, and depending on what you choose, you end up with something that is given a unique name. So everyone knows that a cake is a cake and a biscuit is a biscuit, usually, anyway. There are some grey areas. So when it comes to uh, computer language, you've got the same kind of choices of what you mix in. So here you've, you've got a, a list of, of things you can put into it. Are you going to use files in your system? Are you going to use ASCII, uh, comma, Unicode? Um, and then, so if, if, it's, if it's a C source file, the answer is yes, it's a file. And you can use ASCII, you can use um, UTF-8. Um, probably you can also use um, other Unicode things. I don't know, depending on your system. Uh, the, what I call the, raising agent that makes this thing into something useful and or nice to eat in the case of a cake is the C preprocessor and the the icing on top of the cake is the C libraries that, that make it really nice to eat okay and I've just gone through just a few random examples here that a word docx file um, you can use any any kind of unicode um, you've got your C uh, see your word templates and you've got styles so you can add a title and so on uh, for a fourth source file it's very much like a C um, source file but the thing that makes it that improves it is the fact that it's in fourth the PDF file it's a fourth like thing and you've got the added topping of it's uh, compressed and it can be signed all these good things with PDFs okay for color fourth does it support files? Yes, sort of. There is a word somewhere in there that you can create a file if you want to. So it's kind of, I put it as 0 0.01. There's, there's not much of a file in there. Does it support ASCII? No, not really. I've, again, 0 .00, 0 0.001. Um, <clears throat> ASCII stroke UTF-8, which is essentially ASCII. Uh, the thing that makes it r rise up and be something pleasant is fourth, and the Topping, I've no idea. <laughs> I've just left chocolate there. Right. Okay. So, layers. So, when you make a cake, the cake comes in some kind of layers. But I'm not talking about these kind of layers. I'm talking about, oops, these kind of layers where you've got uh, hardware. This is like the OSI 
layer things, just a subset of them. You've either got an OS or not. You've got a f file system or not as part of the OS. You've got your application on top. So these are the kind of layers in a normal system. And you'll see that the um, colorful system has no OS. So, um, go to the next one here. So the what you can have is um, if, if I, I'm calling it a Jaffa cake forth, which you could do where you have an, an OS uh, on top of your hardware or a VM with an OS in it, and then you implement blocks on top, and then you put your application on top. So this is kind of a uh, implementation of colorful that uses an intermediate OS. And this is this is what I do when I use b b box as a VM. Or, Okay, so so why is it important to keep the the color forth um, encoding scheme this thirty two bit colored token four bits color twenty eight bits for the compressed name because it it produces some very interesting and powerful features it makes the uh, it allows you to create a pre pre parsed source file so compilation is uh, very very fast because most of the work's already been done for you but there is a problem the, um, as um, Klaus was saying he converted his system to a bytes uh, addressed system so he could Im import the VFX uh, TCP IP libraries and this is the same feeling that I have there's a huge amount of uh, fourth source code out there that uses ASCII and colorful doesn't support ASCII characters. So you can see here, for example, the less than and greater than signs are not part of the colorful compressed Huffman encoded character set. So how do you deal with this? And uh, I came up with this idea, I think, back in, in um, April this year which is a very simple way where you can actually um, encode ASCII, which also means uh, UTF-8, into the Colorforth compressed pre-parsed 32-bit uh, colored tokens. And um, so you, what you're seeing here is an actual Colorforth system running, or a, um, a screenshot of it, which is displaying uh, actual colorful source, which displays as any old ASCII. And you can see that you've got uh, characters here that are not part of the colorful character set. Uh, so, um, and how this works, if you, um, as you, as you can see in the text there, I explain how it works, but it's probably easier to see the, oops, going, sorry, going too fast here. Um, what you can see is on the left column is each 32-bit colorforth pre-parsed token. On the next column is its address in, in a block. And um, I go to the next one now. I'm highlighting this one here. Uh, I'm sorry, I've uh, I've got it. I haven't expanded it to full screen. I hope you can all see it. I can't reread really it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so small because I want to have the ability to uh, control everything else and you lose that when full screen anyway so what you can see here 03e 3c uh, 009 so the rightmost character there is a hex character that's four bits and that's the color so in this case it's nine which is lowercase comment and the first one there is the the, f the first four bits of the Huffman encoding. And if it's a zero, that would normally be the, the kind of Huffman uh, null determination character, which means it's an empty string. So it suddenly occurred to me that if, if I uh, start the, the word off with a zero, uh, you won't display anything. Uh, so then, you just have to add a little bit of code that says, well, if it's a zero, have a look if there's anything there. And if there is, read it as ASCII. So the 3E and 3C are the two characters you see here. Um, 
and it, it has all everything else is the same it's, it's it's like there was this empty slot that um every uh fourth word which is um encoded in this colorful system must end with a zero so how it knows to stop so if the first um I don't know what to call it. The first part of the Huffman encoding is a zero, then it won't show anything. It also just says the end. So you've got the opportunity to fit something else. So you've got up to three ASCII characters in there. So the code for this is incredibly easy. Uh, this is it. It's just saying it's, a, it's an if uh, statement. If the first uh, four bits of the token are zero, then Check it and convert it, and 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 uh, output it. Um, else, carry on. So that's that's almost all the code for this extra feature. And on the next screen, there is a little bit of code how it fits in. Um, you you call that code here. So this is the bit that displays characters. And so that's it. So that is how I um, manage to output ASCII characters. So. This simple change to the colorforth prepassed source format, just by adding this extra detection of the of a null string, if you want to put it that way, and the corresponding editor display words allows the colorforth system to continue to use 32-bit color tokens and also support ASCII UTF-8 characters. And that should be it. Oh yes, the other bit was I've got to add keyboard support now. To be able to type ASCII characters into the thing, which is also not not part of the uh, the little keypad, the twenty four key keypad, which uh, allows you to map forty eight characters into that, of which these less than and greater than equals characters are not in that. So the current Colorforth keyboard doesn't allow you to even type them in. I had to, I had to calculate them and enter them in by hand, which of course you can do. So there's uh, a big job to do, which I haven't had time to do this year so far. That's it. Any questions? Well, as always, very amazing talk about Colorforce. Thank you very much, Howard, for that. And Excellent. we already have the first question uh, by Anton. Please go ahead, Anton. <clears throat> yes. So if I understand this correctly, you, um, your uh, ASCII or UTF-8 thing uh, is at most three uh, bytes long, right? Uh, no, because the Colorforth encoding system, if, if I can, I don't know if I can step back through the presentation, should be able to. Um, there is a, a particular color, if you like, color zero, which is an extension character. Um, so you can make words appear on the screen as long as you like. Um, this is kind of a, a neat thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a pain because it would be very nice if everything fitted into one 32-bit um, uh, value. Uh, so you can fit any three ASCII characters into that. And uh, Chuck, of course, is very fond of very short names. So you can actually encode two R, R from, um, uh, well, you, you, you yes. think of them, any, any characters that you don't have in the, in the Colorforth character set. Yeah, but if you I, want I, I was thinking, I mean, it's uh, fit, I think it fits, uh, uh, together with the rest of uh, Colorforth, okay, because if you have, typically have just one, have, have some special characters that you want to encode that are not in the usual thing, and yeah. uh, and uh, there you, but there you don't have long names usually, or That's if right. you have, say, some uh, Chinese character, it typically fits into three bytes, and it's one word, or I don't know. The, the, yeah, you, you can do it. Chinese, know it. <laughs> Yeah, no, you can you can make it longer. So you could you could make um, anything. I mean, this actually opens opens the whole world up. So any any UTF-8, um, what's the word? Glyph, uh, providing your your font supports it, obviously, uh, could be in there. Uh, currently, I only have an ASCII font, but at least I can now present ASCII characters that are not 
supported within the the Color Fourth Forty Eight character set. Okay, thank you, Howard. So, Glenn, what is your question? Um, so, yeah, this this exactly this kind of problem was what um, dissuaded me of my notion of using um, binary uh, binary source codes. Yep. Um, but I was wondering, are you have you looked at uh, Chuck Moore's recent UHD fork at all? Yes. Still... yes, I have. I I captured the screenshots from his video. And I transcribed it, and I haven't had a time to to think about it. That idea is amazing. I mean, that blew my mind yet again, as often with Chuck. Um, it's essentially, he is defining the character set uh, to have meaning. It's it's a bit obscure, but uh, mm. but it's it's very powerful. I don't think it's something that's going to be quite as useful as colorful could potentially be. But um, yeah, until I've actually implemented it, uh, we won't know. Yeah, I seem to recall it's a uh, 64, uh, 64 character like character set with three spare bits, uh, but it's byte oriented. I, I, yeah. I, I have a vague recollection that like Chuck said that um, the the Huffman tokens were like one of his worst decisions ever or something in yeah, yes, that's right. That's right. Well, I'm not sure about uh, Huffman. I mean, this this uh, this idea came out of the fact that I don't like Huffman and it does have this restriction that you've only got a possible 48 characters. I swear, yeah. So um, I was trying to think, well, how else can you do it? And I've struggled with this for a long time. Uh, trying to think of alternatives, and I came up with um, encoding things as paged five-bit tokens and paged six-bit tokens, so you can get a, a full character set in there. And then just one day, out of the blue, I suddenly it suddenly occurred to me that you can pack three eight-bit characters into into an unused word. And I thought, okay, that that solves half the problem. The other half of the problem is just just coding. You know, what keys do you want to press on your keyboard in order to create a, a character that is not part of the of the keypad? Just for those who are not totally uh, up on Colorforth, you see in this area here, this is the uh, half of the character set. This is 24 characters that you can you you, you, you can have in Colorforth, and the other half, if you press the space key, it goes to the the alternate set, as it were, and there's there's various other things as well. But right. yeah, so no, so, uh, Chuck, as always, comes up with these amazing ideas, and uh, I feel uh, it intrigues me for a while. I'm still intrigued by Colorforth. I still want to to finish it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I believe uh, I, I believe Uli had a question before, um, but he put his hand down. <clears throat> Uli, do you still have the question? Oh, Uli, can you hear us? Sense. Maybe he's turned off. Uh, well, uh, Howard, I was just thinking about having an input editor. You know, I really find this very mm -hmm. usable for accessing the extended emoji set and stuff like this. So maybe that's that's the yeah. way to do it in color for. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, that kind of thing. And uh, the is it pinyin um, input yeah. entry. But for some not just that, there are several, right? I mean, uh, and I guess uh, you, you would have to make it very uh, uh, customizable, being forth. <laughs> yes, I, I don't. I don't know which route to go. One option is to is to start to support keyboards, actual keyboards, not not keypad, mm. um, as an option. Uh, exactly. I know that the green arrays um, array forth have this quirt word which if you do that then you can just type on your keyboard providing it is a us keyboard i presume um and it those things do not work with my german keyboards uh, ah, so probably just, most just of add a my english keyboards <laughs> so you just add a qwerty word don't you <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well a, a quirts or a, a um, or a yeah, quirky quirks, sorry, word. Sorry, in depth. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. But then you've, you've got to get into this whole thing of, of configuration. How do you um, oh. allow the user to tell tell the system what keyboard it's got? And then you get into keyboard configuration files, etc., etc. It's much more complicated. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't worry that about... That is very neat. 
I don't worry about any of that because I know you have it all solved by next Euroforce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do something because I, I, I mean, one one option I thought of is that I don't allow people to to type uh, the ASCII characters that fall outside of the colorforth character set. I just say, well, I'm, I'm not interested in that. If you want to do it, do it in hex, as as I did here. You just t type in with a uh, a store. <laughs> you just use store because you've got the uh, address of the block and you just write what you want in there and lo and behold it, with the code that I put in it comes out uh, in, in, as an ASCII character that, um, but the thing is the point of this is that I want to import the huge variety of fourth source that uses ASCII with these uh, uh, characters that I don't have yet so I could just say, well, that's what you do. I can have a, a file. Oh my, I'm using the F word, a file in the system where I import it or export. Um, and that file, can you can use a normal text editor. And I restrict myself to that. Okay. But something tells me I will want to have the ability to type a character that I can display. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to think about that. Okay, thank you very much for the talk, Howard. As always, Colorforce keeps uh, okay. boggling my mind. So, yes. <laughs> um, 